way back yonder, the West boys can help me on this, actually came down and worked for Lee for a while when the territory was that big. Is that true, guys? That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. He came down and I don't think he was Ronnie West at that point. I believe they called him something else because uh, Kevin Sullivan was doing, he was a West at the time. Uh, but I think he was, he played as something else and, or he was somebody else. And he was first time he was ever doing the troubleshooting referee from what dad told us. Uh, apparently the rules had been thrown out the door and it was people were, or, fan, or he felt, or Lee Fields felt the fans were getting ripped off. So he decided he was going to go through this t period of really enforcing the rules uh, to the point where I think Terry Garvin and Bobby Shane were the Gulf Coast Tag Team Champions. And Dad reached down to check Terry Garvin and Garvin just slapped him in the back of the head. And when he did, Dad rang the bell, gave the belts. They lost the belts right there on TV. So it was another building process. And as the, the he said that the more the rules were enforced, the bigger and the bigger the crowds got until until they finally did something later on that was heated. I have been discovering and, and looking at lately was the talent roster that was working Georgia, Florida for Eddie Graham, and the Gulf Coast for Lee, and then up in Tennessee. And the mainstream guys, and we're talking in the 1960s, and early 70s, those, uh, those mainstream workers that were the horses out there drawing the money, uh, your, your Don Carsons, your Leon Baxter, the wrestling pro, uh, who worked under many different names under, under the hood in different places, those guys were, were rotating around to those southeastern territories and maybe once in a while – go out to Oklahoma and work for uh, McGurk and, and, and things like that. But the, the quality of the talent and the work ethic of the guys back in those days was just impeccable compared to, to what we got into later, later in the business. Uh, if you were a professional wrestler and you laced up your boots, uh, not that I ever did, but you had to have the ability to walk into that ring and work with anybody they put you in there with, no matter wh what style it was. And, and we had so many different styles actually from that one. And it goes back to the old Welch family and the Charlie cars that trained the fields boys and things like that. But there were several different styles that they used and that group actually controlled uh, the southern United States for about a 30-year period. Jack, would you agree with that? I totally agree. And we just don't have that today. Uh, you know, I'm not knocking the product, but the, the ability and the knowledge that those guys had and the ring psychology and I'm on, you know, I'm not saying this to, to blow up Rodney and, and, uh, his director brother over there that sometimes <laughs> don't answer his phone. We won't call him names, but, uh, your brother, you know, so I'm talking about your brother, you know, I have to chip in and buy him a card for his phone, get him a prepaid. That's, that's right. That's, that's what we need to do. But, but your you guys, your dad passed away seven years ago last week. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we have something in common. Last week, I lost my mom, yeah. and uh, it uh, it it I don't you know. I know you guys think about your dad every day, and every time I I think about wrestling, I think about I think about Ronnie, and I want to say this because. I worked with Ronnie in so many different capacities as, as far as helping him check up on houses to, uh, you know, the announcing thing on camera with him and watched him work behind the scenes with the guys in the dressing rooms and go over interviews and things like that. And he was as smooth. I think Ron Fuller said it best. He was, he was as smooth as they got. And that's why Ron put so much on his shoulders 
is because your dad could handle it in a way no other could and do it in a dignified uh, manner that nobody could ever get mad at him. I mean, <laughs> I never knew anybody to get ticked off at Ronnie West. I really didn't. And he was, uh, he was top of the line, whether it was in the wrestling business or later in years, I had the privilege uh, when doing the early morning show and, and Dothan on TV for like 25 years to work with Ronnie with uh, Cole Brothers Circus and to also work with Brent and uh, to work with uh, Michael Norris. And all of us had brushes with the business, but I don't guess we ever had an argument, did we, Brent? I don't think so. I don't remember. Seemed like I, we were all on the same page. I think we're all no. on the same page all nope. the time, but uh, but what a what a legacy Ronnie had. Uh, I saw I saw Charlie Smith post something the other day on Facebook. His first hard way, ten dollars he got for it in Atlanta. <laughs> They overpaid him as far as I was concerned. <laughs> <laughs> he should have paid them for that. Is that what you're exactly. trying to say? Exactly. <laughs> not that I really wanted to, but I mean. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Tim, the, you are. The all... days that uh, we all spent working together and the, the history of this old Gulf Coast, Southeastern Continental Territory. Uh, I know you guys have done a lot of uh, programming about the continental days, but I think if you go back to the Gulf Coast, and I think Ron said on the program I watched with you guys not long ago, 1983 was the biggest year for this territory. And by that, I think he was talking about continental as well. 83 was the the turn year for Bob into the hill platform. And this thing just blew up down here, guys. I mean, it was, it was so hot. It was words. Can't describe the heat that was down here, not just from temperatures, but I'm talking about, uh, every arena was selling out week after week after week. And, uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun to be a part of that. It was a lot of fun. Well, Tim Horner, we are on right now with Jack Lord, Rodney West, uh, and Charlie Platt. Even though Charlie cannot hear me, Tim, tell me what you've been up to uh, in the uh, last few years. Uh, we have not uh, seen you. We've been uh, we've been talking about you on Continental Championship Wrestling, showing some videos and stuff of you. So uh, tell us, tell us what's happening, oh, Tim Horner. I need to translate. Right now, Brent uh, Charlie is asking Tim Horner where he has been and what he's been up to. Okay, go ahead, Tim. <laughs> well, I'm I'm still in East Tennessee, uh, kind of just been laying low as far as the rest of the business for the last couple of years. Uh, when when Brad passed, I kind of just kind of lost interest, uh, but I found going to these. Uh, conventions and stuff was uh, was therapeutic. Uh, getting to tell and relive some stories, uh, road stories from Brad. You know, I I was uh, I was as Bob said one time, you're just one of my other boys. True. So that was that that was a compliment, uh, very much so. Uh, I am currently uh, county commissioner up here in Hamlin County. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, been in the bail bond business since, uh, 96, uh, and a fugitive recovery agent. So, uh, that's, that's kept me busy when my girls, um, I, well, let me back just up a little bit. I was, I was in New York, uh, for WWE in 2006 as a producer and agent. And it just got to be, uh, a little more than what I, I was looking for at the time. My girls. Uh, were playing soccer and cheering, and I didn't want to miss them growing up. And so I decided, uh, you know, maybe it's best to just move on at that point. So I'm 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 here in Tennessee, and uh, you know, loving it. You, Tim, can you hear me? I can. I, you know, something that that I want to mention. 
yesterday, eight years ago, I was uh, the victim of a blade job that went about 14 inches right down through here. And they told the family after they super glued me back up that the thing to do was probably uh, make final arrangements because they didn't think I would come off the ventilator. I stayed on that ventilator eight days. And by the grace of the good Lord, I came off. Then they told me at the follow-up that wish we could say we fixed you for a year or two or three, but in your condition, you could be gone tomorrow. Like I said, eight years ago yesterday. And unfortunately, that fall, we all had to meet in Marietta and say goodbye to the greatest worker, as far as I'm concerned, that I ever saw, versatile worker in the ring. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that over all the big guys that made it way up higher than he did. I'm talking about Brad. And that was, that was something that, that you and uh, Tom Pritchard, who I was there when, when Tom and I went in together at the funeral home, that, that is something that I don't think we'll ever get over because Bradley James was without a doubt the most cordial guy that ever put on a pair of tights, laced up boots. If there was a darkness over the dressing room, heck, it could have been everybody got a Nick Goulas payoff and Brad could have brought laughter to the whole place. <laughs> he was just the best that ever was. And I always said he could work with a broomstick, put the broomstick over, come back the next week and sell out with it. Yeah. He, he was amazing. Uh, just, uh, I, mean, I don't, I don't know that he ever had a bad match. I, I never saw uh, one. He, he, he was, you know, we're all our, our worst critics and, uh, Brad would, you know, come in sometimes and say, man, that, that didn't feel right. Well, you know, those, those 10,000 people thought it was good, you know? So, uh, yeah, he was just an amazing person too. Uh, I mean, we, we traveled for golly five, four or five years together. You know, we only put us together in, uh, Georgia in 84 uh, and I heard y'all talking a couple weeks ago about when, when Vince came down, you know, they, they had and I ask us. And of course, Ole had given me probably my first biggest break in the business. Uh, my first, not my first TV, but at that point, it was my first day coming back out of the Crockett territory and, and, and beat Hawk on TV, one of the road warriors. And so at that, you know, Ole was, gave me an opportunity and so, you know, Brad and I, we decided we didn't, we wanted to show a little loyalty to Ole. So we, we stayed on till, till, uh, till, you know, the money ran, the well ran dry, I guess, so to speak. And then, uh, we both went to Louisiana. That's when Brad went and uh, was a North American champion. And I had been there once before. First time I went, um, was out of the Crockett territory. Jake Roberts got us down there with Grizzly Smith. And, uh, and I'm going to tell this story real quick because...